Ford Explorers and many other Ford trucks and SUVs have dual tone horns. What that means is that you essentially have two horns, a high pitch horn and a low pitch horn that work together to produce the sound you normally hear. So when one of those fails, that's when you will hear your horn change. You are only hearing one of those tones. See if you can guess which tone my vehicle still has left. We're gonna take a look at it now and replace it with Ford parts. If you watch my other horn repair video, you probably already know that the horn on these Explorers is right behind the grill. So we are going to take a closer look at it. And sure enough, there are the two horns right below the hood latch. So one of these two is the high tone and one of them is the low tone. Before we determine which is which, let's go ahead and remove some shrouding so that we can get better access. We have two plastic snaps here that I'm going to lift up with a pair of straight blade screwdrivers. And then seven screws with 10 millimeter heads. This front shroud here should just pop, pop up, just like that. We can then gently pull forward on the grill to give us a little more room around the horns. So there are two approaches you could take to replacing these horns. The first is to replace just the horns. That is, you leave the bracket in place and remove the horns from the bracket by removing those two 10 millimeter nuts, one on top of each horn. The second approach is to replace the horns and the bracket and in that case, you would just remove the bracket from the vehicle and the horns would come with it. That bracket is actually held on by just one bolt. And it's right down here behind the grill, basically behind the Ford emblem. And you can see the head right there. It's an eight millimeter head. And that one bolt would remove this entire assembly that would then lift out from behind the grill. Which of these approaches you take will largely depend on what new parts you have purchased. If you've purchased an aftermarket horn, or maybe even somehow just an individual horn from Ford, then you might just want to remove these 10 millimeter nuts to pull the horns off the bracket. On the other hand, if you've purchased the horns with the bracket included, then you might just want to replace the bracket and the horns all together as an assembly. Before I decide which approach I'm going to take, I'm going to go look at the parts that I got from Ford to see whether or not the bracket is included with the horns. And here's the new horn from the Ford dealer. You can see the part number right there, made in USA. I will provide a link to this in the description below. There's our horn. So we have both the high tone and the low tone and the bracket that they're attached to. So since the new horns come with a new bracket, I'm gonna to try to remove the old horns with the old bracket and just replace the whole thing. And here's where the one fastener will go. So I just need to remove that one bolt from the old bracket and the whole assembly should lift off. So I do not have straight line access to that eight millimeter bolt head. So I'm gonna to have to use a universal on a ratchet to try to get up through the grill to that bolt and then spin it out so that I can remove the bracket. It's a little bit hard to see, but I'm gonna to try to give you a vantage point while I attempt that. So I'm pulling out on the grill slightly so that I can have a little bit better angle to get to that bolt head. Okay, I just pushed it onto the bolt head, so I'm gonna try spinning it off. Okay, I've removed the ratchet, and I'm just spinning it by hand now. Okay, I believe the screw is, is loose, so I'm gonna stick a magnet up in there to try to pull it out. There we go. There is our bolt. With that one bolt out, this horn bracket is now very loose. Before I can pull it out completely though, I need to unplug this connector right here. With that electrical connector removed, I am going to try to fish this horn bracket up and out.
And there we go. There's the old horn bracket. If you're curious, according to the labels on the horns, this horn, the one on the driver's side, has an H on it, which I assume means high tone. This one on the passenger side has an L on it, which I assume means low tone. And they are made by FIAMM, F-I-A-M-M, -M, made in USA. And the new horns are identical. The high tone will be on the driver's side, the low tone will be on the passenger side, and again, they are made by FIAMM, F-I-A-M-M, -M, made in USA. When you install the horn bracket, you're going to have to wiggle it down into place just like I did when I just removed the old one. And there is this tab here right by the one bolt. So keep in mind when you go to slide that down, you're going to have to get that tab down into a little socket. Just pull out on the grill and push in the driver's side horn first. And then drop down the passenger side. And then drop that bracket down, something like that. And before I bolt it into place, I'm going to go ahead and plug this connector in, uh, just in case I need to wiggle it a little bit. Okay, that clicked into place. And now my horns have dropped down into place. And you can see the bottom of the new bracket there, and it's just about lined up perfectly with the bolt hole, so I'll just wiggle it down a little bit as I insert the bolt. So I now have my right hand holding the horn bracket up at the top and my left hand feeding the screw into the hole with the magnet. Okay, and then I slid the magnet off the side and I'm gonna stick my eight millimeter socket on the universal up there to try to tighten the screw. Now I'm going to pull out on the grill a little bit, like I did before, just to give my socket extension a little bit more room. Got it as tight as I could by hand, and now I'm going to put my ratchet on it. Keep pulling out on the grill just to give the ratchet extension a little bit of breathing room. Okay, that feels good, good and tight to me. So now I'm going to wiggle that socket off of the bolt. There we go. And this is what it looks like when we're done. Here's the old horn and bracket, and there's the new horn and bracket. One note is that the hood release was actually gnawing into this horn just a little bit. If we look at the new horn, the hood release still can touch it, but it's not hitting it quite so badly. Now let's go ahead and reinstall this deck plate. Make sure the grill is pushed all the way rearward and the clips are all in place, pushing those, those pop rivets in. Then drop your seven screws back into place, tighten them up with your 10 millimeter socket. With everything secured, we'll close the hood. And now it's time to test the horn. Much louder, and I can tell that there's the dual tone again, so it's not just high or low, but it's a comprehensive high and low together. I thought these connectors here were permanently attached to the horns, but they're actually not. The entire harness does disconnect from these horns individually, so if you wanted to, you could replace these individually if you could find a replacement. If I can find part numbers for the individual high and low tones, I will Put those in the, in the description below. Here's a little diagnostic bonus for you. Earlier when the horns were still on the car, I honked the horn with my remote while putting my hand on these horns, and I could feel that the passenger side horn was making some vibration, but the driver's side was not. That led me to believe that the passenger side horn was the good horn. As you could see earlier, the passenger side horn is the low tone horn. It has an L down there. And to my ear, it sounded like the low to tone was not working. Well, I just used a, a multimeter here to check to see which of these has continuity. In other words, to see which of these horns would still allow current to flow through. And if I check the driver's side, nothing. There's, there's no beep. 
for my meter, if I check the passenger side, there is continuity there. This actually uh, seems to confirm that the passenger side horn was working properly. So that horn sound that you heard earlier in the video, that was apparently the low tone horn. So I will actually save this low tone horn uh, in case another one on one of uh, my other Ford vehicles ever goes out because I believe these are standard across most Ford vehicles. So that was a pretty easy job uh, with the right tools. I'll provide a link in the description below to parts and tools that I used. Thanks for watching and leave me a comment if you have any questions.